in global change enablement <clears throat> or change management. I help usually large global firms. So whether they're rolling out a business process or rolling out a tech new technology platform, I really offer whatever supports I can for the people side of the change to make sure that the people are supported through the process. I, I work in a lot of global roles, so it's very easy to be in the corporate world thinking of your strategies, but I really um, tap into who the individuals are sitting in their chairs and they're having to manage this, this uh, change. So I think of all of them. So what do they need to feel supported as they go through this? So my, my higher objective is if you can support people at work, then they would carry that energy with them to their home. So that's really my, my, my higher objective is to help people live flourishing lives inside the organization and outside the organization. Because I have a passion for tapping into the individual's experience, then um, really making sure that you see all the individuals in an organization, um, it can only add to making a better change management plan. When you hear every voice and you get different perspectives, then you'll know if your strategy is targeting one particular kind of audience or if it's really tapping into um, to different perspectives. So the objective in a successful change management initiative is really adoption. So adoption of whatever this change is. And so you get greater adoption if you can tap into as many, as many people as you can, which is why uh, inclusion is such an important part of a change strategy. It's not often um, surfaced or articulated. It tends to come into specific diversity and inclusion initiatives but I personally weave it into my, my current work because I see all the people when I do my work. The key value that I bring to all of my work, and I've been doing this for about 20 years, is unity. Now, if I say the word unity, sometimes it works depending on the audience and sometimes it does not. But I worked for a global professional services firm and um, my boss at the time said, you know, I, th I have a feeling with you, I just need to open the door and let you run. And so he did. He let me run a global initiative that had never been done before. And the tagline actually was a unified approach. And I was able to get 1,200 people from 12 countries in one week participate in, in this initiative. And so the whole approach was if we do this together, we can all learn from each other and we can put all of our energy into it at the same time and do this unified approach. So the marketing um, is unified, the communications, the, the promotions, the um, even just the, the goodwill amongst the presenters, it's all happening at the same time. And so I really use that uh, in the work I do. You know, they have these kindergarten um, posters that they advertise about, you know, be kind, share, and it really is true that if you're kind and you share, it actually makes life better. So whether you're um, sharing knowledge in an organization or you're supporting each other through change, when you work together and you're unified and supporting each other, it makes the, it makes the change and it makes the, the knowledge sharing um, that much better and richer. You know, um, as humans, we, we like to feel just naturally, we like to feel part of a tribe. And so when you do that with your, within your organization, you're creating this, this wonderful energy that really only comes from connectedness. I think a challenge that I've had is I'm a natural optimist. And so although that's my strength, not everybody is the same way. And so what I found is uh, in having my conversations, I'm able to, again, you know, use my, use my values, my optimism, my caring, but then I also have to recognize that not everyone is the same way. And so I have had people for sure that have, that have not come on board, but the best I can do is share with them what the possibilities are and have them come as far forward as they can. And to me, that's actually worked because um, I recognize that some people, you know, sometimes their work does have to be behind a curtain. That's just the nature of the work that they do, or they can only share so much. Um, I also recognize that sometimes people are, they need to observe first. So maybe they, maybe they need to trust and they, they 
gain that trust by observing first. So they may be a little bit later to the game after they've perhaps seen some examples of success. So I think it requires, when things are not going the way you necessarily want, I think it really requires patience and also compassion. So compassion for the human condition that we are all different. Leadership is a very interesting group. So leadership, they're actually, actually I say that they're interesting, but really they're just like everybody else, right? So they're all people, they all have their jobs to do, and they all come in with their own perspectives. And so some leaders are quite responsive and others, they just think, you know, these are rose colored glasses, they don't get it. So for example, uh, an organization where I work during COVID, an executive leader sent out one of those firm wide videos that say, you know what, we're in a new state of the world. If anyone has any ideas, let me know how you can help. So I emailed him on a Friday. On a Saturday morning, he responded and said, gave me his personal cell phone and said, can you call me at 9 a.m.? So here I am talking to this executive leader at 9 a.m. on a Saturday, and he invited me to his leadership team call that Friday to listen to my 30 minute presentation on positive leadership during tumultuous times. So really it's, it, you just have to sort of know who your audience is. So some people would be receptive to it. Others might see it the old fashioned, old fashioned way of not really understanding what it is. Now in those instances, I still apply it, but I just wouldn't tell them what I'm doing. So for example, in, I would incorporate it into my strategy, the importance of looking at the individual, the team and the organization, because to me, that's really looking at the strengths of, of each so that they can all three together be successful. But if I say to them, this is actually an applied positive psychology intervention, whoa, yeah, it'll, it'll close the door. So knowing who your audience is and speaking their language, perhaps that's actually probably the best way of saying this is speaking their language. So that first executive leader, we spoke the same language. So I could just talk to him uh, that way and he was on board. Um, why did I why did I put my hand up? Why did I knock on the door? Why did I why did I respond to that email? And again, you know, at the beginning of this call, you said, what is one of your strengths? And I said, caring. So if I know something, um, I want to help. So um, previous to the, the role where I spoke with that executive, um, I had been a featured speaker for two years for the Oracle Women's Leadership Group. And I ran an applied positive psychology speaking series. And so that's what I said to the gentleman. I said, you know, a couple of years ago, this is what I did. This is how I helped the group. Um, I was actually one of one of um, eight women recognized for bringing positivity to the organization. So it's something that um, that I can speak to and I have experience with. I felt how can I how can I just sit behind my email when there's someone genuinely saying, "Does anybody know how they can help?" So again, it's it's that sense of caring and also an inner sense of duty. Like I can help. And if he, if he thought I could not, then he just would not respond or he'd say, you know, thank you, move on. But he did respond. And I think that if you genuinely care, it's worth it to put up your hand because you just don't know what could happen next. I think what I would tell my younger self is that it's okay to have those conversations. It's okay if your conversation is rejected. Right? It's perfectly fine if your conversation is rejected, but it's it's worth it to have the conversation because of the joy um, that is received that, that you feel when your idea is accepted. And then also, of course, the momentum that happens when two people are inspired from a conversation, um, you really can can do so much together. So I would say don't worry about having your, your conversation rejected because the, the risk is worth the reward. Canadian liaison for the EBBF. Um, back in, I believe it was 2007, there were a group of people in Toronto, a group of professionals that really wanted to create a Canadian leg. And we started in Toronto, the Toronto area. And um, I was just really inspired by it. I loved being able to have these kinds of conversations with like-minded people that you don't necessarily get to meet uh, at the water cooler <laughs> or these days, you know, the virtual water cooler. 
So I really liked being able to uh, engage in that level of conversation with people who really do have a higher purpose when they're at work and they they apply it um, through their own skill set. They apply it in their own way, but they're still applying it. So I really enjoyed um, that part of the, the, the Canadian uh, EVBF. And then of course I got to go to Akuto. So I was able to go to one of the European events and meet people from all over the world. And um, then virtually here with the EVBF, you can still stay connected. And uh, it's just nice to know at the end of the day, you know, we tend to, we can do a lot of our work in, in isolation, or maybe we'll share, you know, with the family or some loved ones, but how wonderful it is to be able to feed off of each other, um, these ideas and have these exchanges at a, at a high level that you don't really get necessarily many other places. Well, I think my contribution to the future, again, it kind of circles back to what you were talking about, about inclusion being important. And that is that I really feel, I really want every voice to be heard. And so I feel that by doing the work I do and really tapping in at a granular level to diverse audiences as we implement change and change is um, constant and it's, it's uh, I, I don't want to sound cliche, but you know, they're saying that there, there isn't really any coasting anymore. Change is constant. And so I think it gives a great opportunity for people who, who do care about inclusion to have a great opportunity to um, maximize the, the number of voices that are being heard. So I feel that that's, that's hopefully what I'm contributing to is that I'm helping more people uh, be heard. I, think I would just like to ask others who may be listening, what do they need? Like, what do you need in order to be heard yourself? What is in your mind and heart that you want to convey at work that you can't. And if you want to have a conversation, if you want a sounding board, I'm more than happy to listen and, and help you talk through those ideas.